Hi, this is Paul Neal at Pen Productions, and for this tutorial, I'm going to do um, just a simple rock and be creating it in 3ds Max and then placing it into Unreal Engine 4 um, and doing a nice reusable uh, rock shader with um, uh, with an instance so that we can uh, customize it and use it on many different rocks and whatnot. So just as a starting point to see what I've created so far, um, here's the uh, you know a simple case of the rock that I've uh, generated. We can see that when I move the rock, it's actually moving through its texture, has cracks on it and whatnot. Um, and I have a, a small rock as well that's been produced, uh, has the uh, same shader on it right now, but some different maps actually, but it's using the same over, overall shader uh, or material in, uh, in Unreal terms. So we can have a look what I've created. I've created a height map. I've created a normal map. I've got uh, the material itself that we're going to be starting to build and understand how all this works. And uh, we also have an instance uh, that we're going to be uh, working with so that we can uh, manipulate it for other uh, rocks and use the same material essentially over and over again. So let's get started in 3ds Max with generating a rock. Now, something to note is that I have tutorials already on YouTube about making uh, some pretty complex rock systems. That rock tutorial is here, um, and uh, it uh, describes how to make this kind of wily e. coyote scene um, using uh, just procedural methods in 3ds Max. We're going to be able to make rocks like this. We're going to make much simpler ones in this case, but uh, rocks like this, and we're going to be able to export them out to Unreal and utilize them in there for building uh, larger scenes and whatnot. To get started with in this case, uh, we're in uh, 3ds Max. This is uh, 2009, but it would work all the way back to who knows where for uh, years past. We're going to start with a box now. Um, when we start with a box, uh, we really want to make sure that we've got a couple of settings set properly. Under Customize, Unit Setup, we want to make sure under Unit Setup that we're working in centimeters and we're not working in inches and whatnot. This is because Unreal Engine works in centimeters and we want to ensure that what we create here is going to be the same size over in Unreal Engine. So I'm going to say OK. I'm going to leave it on um, uh, metric, but I want to actually uh, put it onto meters because I can, this is going to be a big rock, be a big monolithic rock that we want to create here. So it'd be easier to type in centimeters in this case. And for the rock in this case, um, we're going to have it uh, probably a meter by a meter and about two meters high to start with. And you can see we've got this big, huge rock now. Um, Hitting F4, of course, see the wireframe. Let's set the uh, segments to a 5, 5, and 10. The idea being here is I want to get some nice square polygons to start with so that as I start doing uh, displacements on this and displacing out the rock into uh, you know, our nice rock forms and whatnot, it's going to do it evenly and nicely for us. Also, this is going to represent a low-res rock here. We're not going to do anything fancy over in ZBrush or Mudbox or do any fancy retopos in Max or anything. We're just going to do it down and dirty and quick and see the kind of results we can get with it. So next... Um, Let's uh, knock off some of the uh, corners of this a little bit. And I'm going to hit X and type in relax and uh, pick the relax modifier and add the relax modifier, maybe a value of like uh, three iterations or something just to soften the edges off in this case. We can play around with this more later if we like. I'm going to uh, hit X again and uh, add smooth and the smooth modifier um, with uh, smooth and group one checked on so that we uh, have smooth and groups on it. And we don't have corners of the box anymore. So we don't want those corners. We want to make sure that it's rounded out. On top of that, I'm going to add a taper modifier. Yeah, just a taper and I've been at the at the top to make it, you know, a little more sort of, you know, thinner at the top uh, than the bottom, I guess, uh, to make it look a little bit cleaner. So now we have uh, our starting point on our rock. Um, and essentially, this is going to be the low res with a little deformation on it. Uh, add uh, hit X again, and we're going to add an open sub div modifier. You could also use turbo smooth if you like, but open sub div is really better. Um, it's it's new and uh, it's uh, written by Pixar and thank, frankly if Pixar is using it I should be using it is the way I, I figure. So I'm going to turn off isoline display so I can see the polygons it's actually generating and I want to generate quite a bit so I'm going to turn it up to four to start with. We're going to go higher later. Uh, but we don't want to go high right off the bat because it's just going to slow down everything else we do. So we're going to get it uh, as close as possible, and then we'll up-res it um, to see the final result. I'm also going to change the name to um, high-res uh, large rock. 
And now from here, we're going to add a displace modifier. And we don't want to use the WSM. You just want to use a straight up displace modifier. And I want to press the strength up. Now you can see that it pushes up along this new UV coordinate. We don't want it to do that. We want it to use the existing uh, uh, coordinates. So use existing mapping. And now you can see it's it's kind of just ballooned it out, kind of like a push modifier would at this, uh, this point, and just made it larger. So I'm just going to give it some strength right now so I know what I'm working with. From here now, um, let's open up the material editor, which is M on the keyboard, of course. And let's make this smaller over the side so we can see it. And we can uh, then start adding maps in here. I'm going to right click maps uh, general. And I always start with a composite map. If you do some of my tutorials on displacements, you'll notice I always start with this. This is like Photoshop layers, and it's going to allow us to be able to layer up some options in here. Um, so I always start with one just, you know, to, to that just in case I need more. I'm going to take the output of this map and drag and drop it onto the map se uh, section of the displace and choose it as an ins instance so that if this one changes, this one changes. We got updates uh, essentially. You'll notice that the displace suddenly snaps back to where it was starting from. That's because the uh, map is currently outputting black, black being zero, zero displace essentially what's happening. So the strength is a multiplier on top of the color value effectively. So this, in this case, we're, we're multiplying our strength value by zero. I'm also then going to go add another map, and this is going to be a cellular. Uh, I use this a lot in my rock tutorial there, and I'm going to plug it into the um, layer one. And as soon as I do that, you can see our rock becomes this really cool looking bulbous thing. I don't know, we could maybe use that for something. I'm not sure what, but we could use it for something. And double click on the cellular nodes so that we see the properties for it. And I'm going to invert the colors. I'm going to drag white down on the black and say swap. And now you'll see that it's uh, giving us this uh, really coral-like look, which is kind of cool, actually. Uh, you could come up with some interesting looks with this. And uh, I'm going to take the size up a lot bigger so that we've just got these big chips on the rocks. And it's, it's you know, kind of giving this these big random chips across it. And then we can play with the output. Now, I'm going to leave the strength up a bit. And in the composite, I'm going to play with the uh, opacity. And I can play with this, that value and, and just sort of determine what sort of big chips I'm looking for. So in the uh, cellular, there's all sorts of settings. You can get all kinds of crazy things happening. And it's amazing what you can do with it. Um, but I'm pretty much going to leave it like this and just find a nice value that gives me some nice big sort of uh, cuts in it. And maybe, you know, sort of the amount. It gives me just sort of a, a rock that's got some interesting shape and form to it. That looks pretty good. Now we want to add in some finer details. So in our composite node, I'm going to hit uh, total layers and hit the plus button. So we've, we've got the layers. And uh, if you're not aware, the layers in the actual properties here are the correct way around for what Photoshop would be. Uh, but it adds it uh, top down in the actual node. So there's layer two and there's layer two on top. I'm going to copy my cellular down and plug it into layer two. Of course, there's no change because, you know, this layer is just completely over top of this one. Um, however, I'm just going to do some adjustments on this and maybe give myself some much smaller chips in this case and just uh, give my, you know, take that way down. And again, I can then start playing with the opacity of this, but I'm going to also change it to maybe something like screen and then also play with the opacity. So I get these extra sort of details now being blended in. Um, into the rock to give it a little more shape. So I've got some uh, large form shapes um, at the bottom that I can play with. And then I've got these small form shapes that I can play and just kind of blend them in to get whatever sort of rock formation I'm looking for. We can then do all sorts of things with this. We can plug in all kinds of values. We can work with all kinds of looks and feel. And uh, I'll let you explore that. Again, take a look at my other rock tutorial. You'll see what's possible. It's, it's pretty much endless what you can do. And with the new um, OSL shaders, it really is completely, um, you know, endless is what's capable of being done. So I'm just going to close down the material editor. This uh, rock is basically done at this point as far as the high res goes for this tutorial. Um, 
and uh, we can go down to open sub div now let's uh, crank it up to iterations five and you can go to iteration six if you want you'll notice now we've got this really crisp clean uh, look for it it'll take a second to calculate properly but you'll notice now that we've got a really crisp clean look of course we have a lot of vertices in this model this is uh, you know dense like a, a ZBrush model would be where you've just got a million verts um, and obviously this can't be used in engine it's not going to be uh, you know uh, something that we can actually take directly into unreal so we need a low res I'm going to copy this with control V and make sure it's a copy and I'm going to call this low res and just get rid of the uh, padding on the end and make a copy of it. And in the copy now, um, once it's generated, it's it's thinking about all those iterations in turbo or the open sub div probably. I'm going to go and delete the uh, open sub div from it, and I'll go change it to another color so that we can see what we're doing. So there's really the um, uh, the, the low res version and the high res version sitting on top of one another now. So the low res version looks pretty good. Um, I, I'll usually do some changes to it, little tweaks to it uh, up above the displays just to uh, make sure it's exactly what I'm looking for. Because sometimes, in this case, it really isn't that important. It fits pretty good. But sometimes the low res version doesn't quite have enough polygons to cover some of the areas properly. Or maybe the amount that it kind of sticks out, the profile I'm getting in that low res version isn't quite what I'm after. And I want to clean it up a little bit. So. In the idea of keeping it all procedural, I'm just going to add um, uh, an edit poly modifier. Now, normally I don't do this by adding an edit poly. I just collapse it down. But in this case, I'm going to keep it all procedural in case I want to go back. It would uh, completely destroy the edit poly that I'm about to do it uh, do here. But at least it's uh, everything else has been uh, kept in the history. Now I could also collapse it down and just recopy the rock back out again. So. Under free form, I'm going to go and um, set up uh, draw on surface, and I'm going to say pick and pick my high res surface, give myself some offset, uh, maybe 0.7, we'll see how that does, and then I can use the um, uh, retopo tools to be able to sit this on the surface. So I'm going to go up to a value of one maybe, and you'll see now that it's actually pushing it up onto the uh, surface a bit more, so maybe it's uh, correcting a little bit. And you'll see it's uh, pushing it up onto it. I could also make sure that some of these areas are getting uh, proper sort of, you know, definition in them uh, by pushing around some of these uh, elements and working with those, and ensuring that uh, they're they're sort of sliding over the surface where they should. So I'm using the move uh, tool here. Uh, it's this one up here, which is the move conform brush. So I can then go and sort of pick up my high points if I'm not getting those picked up right now. And again, this is uh, kind of getting around the uh, need of having to do a, an auto retopo in ZBrush or uh, over in Mudbox or something. Uh, this is going to, you know, uh, sort of just give us a close approximation. We don't need necessarily anything that's absolutely perfect in this case. We just need something that's really close and uh, and looks pretty good. And we'll maybe pick up some high points there and keep it relatively even. We could also do a little bit of relax if we like. You can kind of see I've got kind of corners and spots here. And we could soften those out. And we could just use the regular brush and not conform it at all. And if you want to just kind of knock off corners, we can then knock those corners off um, and uh, make sure they're a little rounder, maybe uh, a little softer in places. Again, we're more worried about the profile of this low-res rock because that's what we're going to see in Unreal. Once the normal maps are on it, we're not going to see, um, you know, the, the the sort of low polyness of it, other than in the profile of it. So that's pretty good. There's our low-res rock done, so it's completed. And now I'm going to do an unwrap on it so that it's uh, unwrap modifier. And this is going to be really quick and again down and dirty. I'm going to just use some automation tools to handle this. Uh, I'm going to set my uh, selection down to the uh, uh, spray can. I want to make sure I'm selecting by face. And I'm also going to make sure that I have the uh, uh, ignore back face on so that I can just do this real quick. And I'll go and select all the front faces. I found an odd bug and uh, I find I have to break it up by face now. If I try and break it up by edge, it won't break up properly for some reason. So uh, hopefully we can get that corrected uh, at some point uh, by reporting it to Autodesk. But once that's uh, done there, I'm just going to hit uh, quick planar 
and move around to the next side and select all of it. Make sure nothing else is picked. You can see I got a face picked here. I don't want to want to make sure that I'm only uh, breaking off the uh, pieces that I want uh, in this case. So make sure you keep going around and checking them. And in here with the uh, select by element turned on, I should be able to check and see what pieces I've got. And so you can see which elements I have at this point. So we haven't got this face broken off. And this is what's strange is this face should be broken off. Uh, so there it is there. That one is. This is the top and bottom. You can see that it should be broken apart, but it's not. So I'm just going to simply select, uh, marquee select around the uh, bottom. To make sure it's selected. And there's the bottom. Uh, looks like we might be missing some polygons there. And so that's the top, that's the bottom, and that's the bottom. So I'll just grab those and just make sure we do a, another uh, uh, quick planar map to break it up. So these are our, our sides now. We've got all our sides broken down. I'm going to grab them all and do a quick peel. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it resizes them properly. So the checkerboard pattern's good. Quick peel doesn't do a very good job of packing them. So we'll go into pack UVs, maybe pack to 0 0.01, rotate the clusters, fill holes and say pack and, uh, and see what we get. Now I'm just gonna straighten some of these and maybe it'll get a bit better result next time. Grab them all again, pack UVs again and it might be a little bit better. So there's our, our packed result. And again, we could collapse this. If I was going to keep working in Unreal or in Max, sorry, I would I would collapse this down and, and not leave all this history in here if it doesn't need a change. Maybe just keep a copy of it so I could go back and edit it. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it as is because it's going to be my asset for uh, Unreal. Uh, get out of the sub object mode. I'm going to select both of them and go into the, my move tool. And with my move tool selected, I'm also going to go press F12 and make sure that I zero this out just by right clicking on this, the three spinners. You want to make sure that your pivots of your objects are at 000 in max before you export them over to uh, Unreal or else your pivots be offset in Unreal. And we want it right at the bottom so we can drop it onto the ground plane. With that, press zero and we'll uh, bring up render to texture. And in render to texture, I'm going to say enable um, projection, turn off the sub object level pick and pick my high res rock that I have in the scene. It'll take a second while it thinks about this and it adds a projection modifier onto our low res rock uh, with an offset here. And so I'm going to say use existing channel, channel one. I don't want to go and use uh, automatic unwrapping because I just painstakingly unwrap my model. And down further, I'm going to click add on the outputs and choose uh, just a height map and a normal map, let's say right now. Uh, so I have those two cho uh, chosen. I'll output um, some uh, textures for those. And in this case, I'll make them 1024 to start with. And I can uh, size them down in Unreal Engine if I have to, uh, if they're too high. And I'll just go and pick a location to save my uh, data to. So I have a, an images folder. It's outside of my game project folder so that I'm not... Uh, uh, you know, having these part of my uh, my actual game project. So I've got a dump uh, location that I can put them. I'm just going to make them a JPEG as well. And I've got all my textures there that I've exported out of or, or saved out of my drawing application that's going to be used in here. And um, I'm going to call this uh, something that makes complete sense. So I'm going to call it, uh, uh, in this case, the top one that we're working with, or the sorry, the second one we're working with is our height map. So I'm going to save this as large rock underscore H and I'm going to stick an 01 uh, or an 02 on it because I've got others I've already done in here so I don't want to overwrite those I'm going to press save on that and you can do it full res because uh, Unreal is going to uh, go ahead and uh, uh, do its own compression on it so I'll save this one as well and it will be uh, JPEG as well so we want uh, large rock and this one is going to be N for normal, and it's going to be O2. Um, and save on that one as well at full res. They're both set to uh, 1024. 
Um, and now it's just a matter of rendering it. So I'm going to hit render. It's going to ask me, uh, there's no target slot. It wants to try and build a, a shader for you in Max. I don't care about that. I don't need a shader in Max. So I'm just going to hit pre uh, press OK. And it's going to go about rendering out the solution. Now, this worked perfectly well. But let me show you what happens when you get an error and you see an error in this. So if I go back to the projection modifier and take the cage, for instance, and say reset. So you can see the resets drop back down to the surface here. I'll press render again. Don't show me this. Let me overwrite. And what you're going to see now is a whole lot of red. And the red is essentially where this cage is lower down than the high res. So it's not hitting the high res because it's projecting a, you know, sort of a ray gun from the blue cage down. So I'm going to push that back out again using my push. Or I could go ahead and do the uh, update, and it'll update with a tolerance. So you can hit that if you like, and it'll update with a tolerance. Now, you really do need to play around with this sometimes to get it uh, just right. But that seemed to work fine. So I'll go ahead and do the render again. Make sure that there's no red spots and everything looks fine. And then we want to just check our maps to make sure that the maps actually came out OK. So I'll close this. Uh, I tend to use um, uh, our um, Fastone Image Viewer uh, to check maps. So in Fastone, I have my uh, maps that I've just put out. Um, I think I called them Large Rock. There they are, Large Rock N. Oh, I don't think that's it. There it is there, 02. And the normal map. There it is there. So the normal maps work just fine. It looks pretty good. Um, and um, you know, the uh, large rock 02, or that's the tall rock, sorry, the large rock. Uh, maybe I put it. Let's go back and check. Oh, it, the folder didn't get chosen correctly. So I'll go back and repick that folder. Um, e images project. There we are. Let's go and add that. I should have both of them now. There's the large rock I just output, and then the, uh, of course, the uh, uh, large rock uh, height map. Now you can see the height map is actually got gray tones and uh, no white or black. So we're going to make a quick adjustment uh, back in Max again. Uh, to try and correct that. If you go up to the top options here, you'll see a min max height. And this is uh, essentially setting up where the minimum and maximum height is for the height map. So I'm going to take those values down smaller. So the negative value on the top down to maybe 0 0.04 and the, the uh, positive value down to 0 0.04. So negative 0 0.04 and uh, 0 0.04. Close it, render it again. And now you'll see that my height map will have blacks in it. Now you can clamp it too much. We're starting to get some black areas here that are really sort of hitting too much black. And that's probably because we've clamped it off too much and you're starting to get this puddling effect of black going on. So in that case, you want to go back and you want to adjust it some more and play around with those values. But at this point, we'll say that's done and that uh, needs to be exported. The uh, low res rock is a piece of geometry now. So I'm going to go to File, Export, Game exporter, turn on tangent binormals, go and uh, set it to Z up. This really doesn't matter though, for the most part. Uh, Unreal is pretty good at uh, knowing that it was output at Y up or Z up, but this is really back and forth between Max Maya. But Unreal is Z up, so I'm going to set that. I'm going to set my output folder, and um, so in our in my output folder, I have uh, an export folder, and I'm going to call this large rock um, O2 again so that uh, I know which things go with with, with which things so oh, that's not where the name goes I'm gonna say cancel sorry we want to just pick this folder and then we want to put the name into the file name location here so that we've got the file name in there so we can leave the game exporter up and it'll export everything out to that folder by any given name I'm also going to set it to export selection. This is important because I don't want to accidentally export out the high res in this case. So I have the low res picked. I'm going to export that. It should only take a second because uh, I only have that low res one picked. And now the next step, we're going to step over into uh, Unreal Engine and we're going to import these and start building a shader um, and start manipulating the, uh, the textures in there to get our rock looking like a rock.
For the next step, we're going to have to step into Unreal Engine here and start importing things. I have a project already set up. I have some base lighting with a base uh, object here that I've uh, created uh, for some work I'm doing with my students. And um, I have broken it down uh, into an assets folder, material, and texture. So let's import our uh, bits and pieces that we need into the correct folders. So first off into uh, our assets, I'm going to uh, press the import button. And in the import button, um, I have my export folder that I can go and grab and uh, grab the uh, large rock 02 FBX file and then set the settings in here. Uh, I usually like setting convert scene unit. It, it shouldn't need to be on because we worked in centimeters and max and centimeters and unreal, but I always turn it on anyways. Other than that, it's pretty much just going to be defaulting. So I'm going to say import all. Now we have this large rock that we've generated over in max and it kind of looks like this. So I'm just going to delete that out. Uh, I'm going to texture the asset itself instead of texturing the um, uh, the, the objects in the scene. This way, I, as I drag objects in the scene, they'll already be textured for me and I don't have to go about doing it uh, all the time. So here's our rock. It doesn't look too exciting. Uh, we can uh, take a look at the wireframe of it and obviously it's, you know, relatively r low res, has, uh, you know, a good, um, uh, you know, sort of some good form to it, sort of, you know, good shape to it, uh, but it's nice and low res. You can see that this is the shader that's being uh, currently used on it, just the world grid uh, material. Let's go and start building uh, a texture then and uh, a, a material. So first off, let's get our textures in. So now we'll import our uh, textures. I'll press import and uh, it'll be in my images folder and we have the uh, large rock uh, height uh, 02 and the large rock n02 and open those or import them sorry it does a processing on the actual files when you do this so it's actually processing them and making changes and you can actually see here it tells you the texture uh, large rock n02 is imported as a normal map so it's doing specific uh, compression and uh, changes to the files it imports it it's not just like in max where it's referencing the file so um, now we have our two uh, uh, files that we can start playing around with. And you could output all kinds of different layers. And this is just an example here of what I'm going to use to start messing around with some of this. In the materials folder, let's make a new material. So I'm going to say uh, new material. And we're going to call this uh, rock. And I already have a, uh, a rock. So I'm going to just call it uh, rock02 uh, underscore mat. And so I know it's a material. And um, I'm not calling it large rock for the reason being is, is I can make a, a, a material here that handles any type of rock and we can be able to put the different maps in that we need for this uh, and use material instancing. So I'm going to open that up by double clicking on it and it gives us this uh, base shader and we just need the base sh shader in this case. So. I'm just going to peel this off to the side and drag in my textures. So back to my textures, grab my two textures that I actually output. And now we have uh, those uh, placed in here. So with our um, uh, rock, uh, we want to apply material, but I'm not going to apply this material directly. I'm going to apply an instance of it right off the bat so that I know I've got um, you know, uh, uh, an instance running that I can start adjusting per uh, rock if I like. So in this case, so our uh, rock 02 mat, I'm going to right click on this, say create material instance. And this is going to be my uh, large, large rock 02 mat inst for instance so i know this is the instance and when you open this this is what the instance looks like and right now there are uh, no properties that we can really change other than uh, for this case here there's the physics material but the parent material which is our rock o2 mat which i have open here so um, we're going to be able to expose parameters here that we can adjust on a uh, per instance basis so over to the rock 02 mat, I'm going to take the um, normal map and I'm going to plug it into normal. And once you've done that, you have to make sure you hit apply so that it'll compile the shader and it compiles it out. So now with that compiled, let's go make sure that we add that uh, large rock um, instance on here. There's the large rock 02 mat inst that we created, this one here. 
And so you can see now we have this rock, instead of looking like it was didn't have any shape and form, it suddenly looks like it has all this magic shape and form to it. Now it's completely black, so um, uh, I'm gonna go and create some uh, um, you know, materials or other nodes in here. I have the list hidden on the side, but if you right click, you can uh, get that same list up. And we're looking for a, a constant vector uh, three now as it turns out constant vector three is simply holding down on the alphanumeric keyboard three and then click and it'll it'll create one for us so i want to plug that into the base color and then just give it a mid-tone gray uh, for instance for a rock and hit apply again we can skip back to our rock and we can see that the rock now is mid-tone gray with our detail in it. And it looks very much similar to the high-res rock did over in Max, but it has very few polygons because the normal map is pulling up all this amazing detail. So let's start getting some variation on this and build a variation in using our height map. Let's get it so that the lows of the, uh, of the height map area become darker and the highs become lighter. And we can do this by uh, manipulating our um, uh, color with our height map. I want to use a multiply, and multiply is nice find. You can go right click and uh, type in multiply if you like, uh, or find it in the list that uh, sits down the side. So here's the palette. So you could go and find it here if you like. But again, M on the keyboard will get you to that. Um, so I'm going to plug this into the A channel, A back into the base color. And I want to take the output of the texture. Now, I'm not doing any um, uh, uh, channel packing. If you're uh, ahead of this kind of tutorial, uh, the channel packing would allow me to be able to use a single channel easier. I could use any one of these, and it'll, it'll help you re uh, save texture space in Unreal. So take a look up for channel packing tutorials. and uh, you might be able to find something on how that's done. I'm just going to take the full output in this case and just plug it into the uh, uh, multiply. And I'm going to hit apply again, and we'll take a look at the result. And you'll notice now that we have a black rock again, but all the high points are, are uh, going into the white tones. And that's because we're doing some basic math here. We're taking black in this texture, and we're multiplying uh, whatever color is output out of our uh, uh, constant vector three by black, black being zero, zero times anything is zero, so we're getting black. And then of course, if there's white output, one times whenever we've got, we'll output this and we'll get this uh, exact color. So this will be the brightest color we've got and black will be the darkest. But what I wanna do is I wanna be able to control this map. I wanna find a way to kind of limit the amount of values in here uh, and control what the output of this is. So I can control that it doesn't just go to black. In Windows Inc, I'll try and explain that, uh, in that if we have our base color, and that's our base sort of color that we've got, and we're multiplying it by um, you know, some uh, value, I'll just do that in red, and that value happens to do you know, this, in a sense, over it. So this is our image input. And down at the bottom, we have black, and up at the top, we have white. Um, this point here on our, our color value is gonna come out whatever that color value is, because that's one, this is zero. But it's gonna take this point here and it's gonna bring it down and put it into white, and it's gonna, or into black, sorry, and it's gonna become black on us. We wanna manipulate this, um, uh, this entire curve that we've generated here, and we wanna set it up so that we can maybe have that curve look more like this and flatten it out more so that our uh, we don't have pure white points. We have sort of uh, you know mid-tone gray up top and a dark gray in the bottom so that we're actually pulling the value up and down and, and manipulating it. So let's have a look how that is done. We're gonna need uh, another multiply. We're gonna need an add, A on the keyboard, and we're gonna need two constant vector ones, which is one on the keyboard to input these. So first off, let's take the output of our, uh, our, our height map and plug it in to the multiply. So the, we're multiplying the value by some value here. So we can make this uh, map go completely black. And let's look at what the output of this uh, point in our, our flow is. Right click on it, start previewing, and there it is there. I'm gonna set this to box so we can see it. So you can see what's happening. If we multiply the output of this by a value of one, we get the same map. If we take the value down to zero, it'll turn completely black on us. So let's plug in our uh, multiplier here and just set the default here back to one so it doesn't change it. 
Let's now add the add value. So if we plug the add in and put it into the flow and then take our uh, constant and plug it in, if we add zero to it, we'll have no value change. If we add a value to it, uh, say a value of one, and let's start previewing the add output, you'll see that it's just gone really, really white. So we've taken these values and added one to all of them and it's pushed it way up. So if we take that down to somewhere at 0.5, you'll see we'll start getting back. So the default value of that is going to be zero. So at this point, we should have absolutely no change whatsoever to the end result of our shader. We're essentially multiplying by one and we're adding zero. So the output of our add will look exactly the same as the output of the texture sample. I'm just going to stop previewing so it's not being previewed. And um, I'm going to take our two constants, right click on them, convert to parameter. Now that they're parameters, I can publish them essentially to the material instance. So I'm going to end up with spinners up here that I can actually control in the instance in real time to affect our rock. So with those, let's add some, uh, you know, uh, names in here that make some, uh, some sense. So I'm going to call this diffuse mask multi for diffuse mask multiplier. I'm going to kind of call this a mask here. You can call it a height if you want. I'm going to go to the other one and um, uh, I'm going to call this diffuse mask add. So with their add, and I can also put them into groups and I'm going to add this into the uh, into a group called the Fuse here, and you'll see where that comes up. I'm going to go and add the add as well. I can just pick it out of the list now. And so let's publish, you know, or, or write the shader out again. So hit apply, and back to the rock. It should look the same. And then here's our instance, and but you'll see now that there's these two diffuse properties that we can turn on, and these are the values. So if I uh, multiply this value up or down, I can actually go in and uh, you know shrink that. Uh, curve down. So as I multiply it down, it's going to become darker and darker on us because I'm multiplying the value of our, our uh, you know, our color uh, by closer and closer to zero. But then I can use the add and I can add it back up again and add some value back in. So I can get my low points sort of a dark gray and my high points, um, you know, are, are a little bit brighter. So I get a nice variation. And as soon as I do that, there's no apply. I'm actually changing it on the rock itself. So if we take a look and I'll just pull that over to one side and now have a look at this instance, you can see that I can make real time adjustments to those values to get the look and feel that I'm looking for for the rock. So there's my rock starting to look with sort of some nice high points, some nice low points and whatnot. Back to our shader again. And um, we're going to just keep adding some uh, changes to this. So I'm just going to pull some of this up out of the way and just push this up out of the way for now. So in this case, we have our uh, uh, specular and roughness, and we want to be able to control those. The roughness is like the micro roughness of a surface. So when a light hits it, if it has a lot of roughness, it's going to scatter it. You can think about running sandpaper over a chrome ball or a piece of shiny metal. You're roughing it up, and the amount of specular doesn't change. It still just it returns just as much energy from the light, but you no longer have a mirror finish to it anymore because you've roughed it up. And that's what roughness is going to control for us. And we want to be able to control specular and roughness with this height map right now. Um, and then we're going to change it up as we go and make it make make it more and more complex. So I'm going to grab all of those and just say copy, click down here and paste, plug the uh, uh, height map back in, and then plug that into specular. This means that we're going to be able to get the high points of our uh, rock to be shinier than the low points in this case, but we'll probably want to mix in some other things. I want to do that with the roughness as well and have that actually control the roughness too. So I can control them all individually at this point in time. So now with these uh, put in here, we probably needed to make some uh, changes to our naming conventions here. This is diffuse and this is going to be uh, our spec and this will be spec and we'll get rid of the ones on the end of them. And we're also going to set our own little uh, uh, group here. So again, I'm going to go select the group because it's coming as diffuse and call it spec. And again, on this other one, I can just go ahead and pick it out of the list now. So on these ones too, these are going to be, um, I'll just call it rough for instance, and we'll call this. You really want to make sure also while you're doing this that you don't get the duplicate names. Uh, duplicate names are bad because it'll just ignore them 
uh, and just pick one of them out of it. So that should look pretty good. You should be able to control those. So again, I'm going to say apply. Let's take a look at our rock. And again, you're going to see that it's looking really, really shiny at this point. So again, back to our material instance. And now you'll see that we have these new values. Looks like I missed one of them. Uh, diffuse roughness. There we go. And I'll just apply that. As soon as I apply it, you'll see this change. And now we have our roughness and our spec values that we can uh, type in here to adjust some of the look and feel of the uh, of the rock. So with the spec uh, right now, it's outputting some high points. I can darken that by just taking my multiply down and, and make sure there's very little spec on this probably. We probably want a fair bit of um, uh, um, you know roughness overall. So I'm actually going to pull the multiplier down and then push the add up to to get it. And you'll see that those sort of really shiny bits go away, but we're, we're still returning energy. There's still sort of a certain amount of sheen to it, but there is no, uh, you know, uh, glossy sort of shiny surface because our roughness has been pushed up a fair bit uh, to uh, to start, uh, you know, dispersing and uh, diffusing the uh, the light transfer off of the rock. So that's looking pretty nice. It's looking very rockish at this point. So with that said, um, you know, we've got really a kind of a finished rock shader, but we've just have a color at this point. And what we want to do is we want to start mixing in, um, you know, a, a, a nice uh, painted map and we'll get that the next stage. But that painted map is going to be a default uh, stone material that we're going to use that I painted. I painted this in Krita because it's got a really nice, simple uh, method for uh, creating uh, uh, tileable textures. You just hit W and the whole screen tiles. You can do it in Photoshop, but it's a real pain with the uh, uh, the offset filter because it only works by layer. Um, and of course, you can do it in Substance and just about all kinds of other applications. But it needs to be a tiled texture for this next step. So we'll get into that next then. Step three is going to be adding in world aligned textures. Now, world aligned textures are kind of cool the way they work. Uh, I'm going to go to the asset here and just drag out my tall rock that we uh, looked at uh, initially. Press F just to frame in on it. And you can see as I move this around, it's actually sliding through its uh, uh, texture effectively. And it's, it's moving through it. And it's moving through it because the, uh, the textures are being projected uh, from uh, you know, the X, Y, and Z coordinates in world space. And so it's being projected onto the rock. The advantage with that is, is we can have a, a, you know, a texture on a rock that uh, doesn't end up getting scaled if we make the, large, or the rock larger or smaller. That means that the, the relative size of the texture itself isn't being affected. And that's great because you'll see that it, it keeps its um, look and feel to it. We don't expect the texture to get uh, larger if the rock is larger. It should remain the same size, the size of the cracks, the size of the dirt on it, the size of all those things that might be on there. You'll see that it retains that information. It also is nice when you start moving the rocks around and adding multiple together because it will actually start to uh, feel like it fits together because the textures themselves will start to blend together the seams a little bit and kind of hide the, uh, the seams as you uh, start moving and, and building larger assets from a rock, let's say. Now with our uh, rock that we've created, this large rock uh, we have, uh, we have some uh, you know, just sort of color variation on it right now, but we don't have uh, any major texture going on. So let's start to add that in and uh, start to put that into our uh, into our uh, material and blending it in. So back into our textures, I'm going to go find one of my uh, stone tiles. So I have this one, for instance, as well as uh, this one that I painted. I'll, I'll use this one instead, maybe the uh, the second one. So we can drag that in and we'll start working with it. So here's the uh, uh, texture sample for it. And we're going to replace this, uh, this uh, input entirely. So I can actually just get rid of that. Now, I don't want to plug this in as straight up texture map because that would use the mapping coordinates of the rock itself. We don't want it to. We want it to be, uh, you know, be projected on in world space. So we're going to look up for the world uh, Align texture, um, and if you look at the world align texture, double click on it, it actually opens up a whole new flow for you. So, this is what a world align texture looks like. Uh, so, it's a, a, a material a function that's being used here that will have, uh, you know, sort of combined a uh, bunch of nodes together and uh, allows us to just do it nice and simple and fast. So I'm going to plug the output into the texture object, but you'll notice it doesn't allow us to do it. It's asking for a texture object, not a texture sample. 
I want to right click on it and say uh, convert to texture object and you'll notice all the uh, outputs go away. It's because a texture object is the raw um, file. A texture um, uh, sample has sampled in the texture. It's essentially using a texture object under the hood in a sense, sampled it in, processed it, broken out the, uh, the channels and whatnot. This is like direct reference to the map that is stored in the project. So I can plug that in now. And we're going to use one of these three outputs. So you've got X, Y, so the sides just from the top or all three. We want all three. So I'm going to stick that in there and uh, then hit apply. Go back and take a look at the rock as the uh, shader applies. Now you can see that the rock texture is being applied from all angles and um, it's uh, been uh, you know added on to it. Now we want to be able to control the size of it and everything. So back here and we'll see that we have a texture size input and we're going to add another constant uh, vector one just one on the keyboard plug that in i'm going to parameterize this again i'm going to call this uh, diffuse size and we'll add that diffuse size node into the diffuse parameters that we have uh, group and again hit apply and now if we take a look at the instance we have this diffuse size we can play around with so I'm going to uh, pull this off and just put it off to the side here you can see it's set to zero and zero is no good the default is actually a, a value of 100 so we really need to make sure that we set some defaults here so this is right now defaulting to a value of zero we want this to default when we make a new instance to a value of 100 uh, so that it's a uh, uh, it isn't, you know, so incredibly small. So uh, if I turn this off now, you'll see that the texture goes back to that size. As soon as I turn it on, it overrides with this value. So we can then take this up and down. So I could make it to a value of 200, for instance, um, or play around with it in real time now and, and see the results. So we want to be able to mix this in uh, to the results of our specular and uh, we could eventually you know, try and mix it into the normal if we wanted. We could mix it into other channels. So um, again, back into our texture. And here's the output of this. And really we want to mix it with some value into our height map and get it to sort of blend together with it uh, in some ways. Uh, we're using currently right now the uh, the output of this to kind of control a, a color change value uh, for height. So we're going to leave this uh, flow um, as it is. But what we're going to do is we're going to blend in um, our uh, diffuse map with our height map. And we're going to do it differently whether we want specular roughness. We're going to use a lerp node. And a lerp node is a linear interpolation. It's like having two layers in Photoshop where you turn the opacity down on the top layer and it shows through the bottom layer. That's an, uh, a linear uh, value change. So to get that, you just press L. I'm going to need two of those in there. So I'm going to lerp to, uh, two textures together. Uh, in this case, I'm going to uh, plug the uh, height map into channel B for both of these. And I'm going to take the output from uh, our world align texture and plug it into channel A for both of them. So that we have those set up now. Now the output of the current height map is going into our multiply. So I'm going to plug these into our multiply. So lerp into the multiply nodes. Uh, so that it, uh, you know, plugs straight in. By the way, if you want to uh, make these lines sort of flow a little better and not cross into things, if you just double click on them, it'll add this extra little sort of node that you can position um, and uh, and shape it. And you can add as many as you want just to make it a little easier to, to see where things are going. So now that that's going in, um, they're going to blend together the LERP based on this value. So right now it's a 50-50 mix going into the uh, result. Uh, we're going to make sure we parameterize those again. So I'm going to make a couple more uh, constant vector ones by holding down one, plug those in. And then again, we're going to parameterize both of these. And uh, we're going to, um, uh, you know, maybe set this up as diffuse, uh, you know, uh, we'll kind of call this, uh, uh, diffuse spec mix maybe and we'll set that into um, the spec and we're going to um, uh, call this one diffuse rough mix and we're going to put that into our roughness so we have two more inputs now in this world line texture we have a size we have control over the multiplying of them i'm going to apply this take a look at the instance now again and you can see that we have these extra channels so that we can now start playing around with those and 
zero and zero uh, is going to have it all one way or all the other uh, at a value of one. So it might be nice actually just to get it to do an automatic 50-50 split on these. So I'm going to set the defaults to these 0 0.5 and 0.5 so that it's blending them 50-50 all the time uh, for those, those two channels. And then we can play around with those and determine uh, which one is going to get us the better sort of mix on them. Or again, we want a little bit of this detail out of the map sort of working into the spec and the uh, roughness channels. So we can now control that uh, through these uh, to get it to look the way we want. You can see that it really affects the spec channel because the map is probably brighter than the height map is. And then we can adjust the, again, the amount of uh, multiply and add to sort of uh, uh, you know, compress contrast and, and additive value onto it to adjust it. So there's a lot of flexibility here. What's going to make this completely flexible now is the ability to be able to plug in any maps that we want to these so that we can reuse this shader for the next rock. That next rock, may we may want to have it use a different diffuse map or a different tiled map. And we might want to have, a, you know, obviously a different height map and a different uh, normal map, which is, you know, being mapped locally onto with the unwrap. So uh, let's... Uh, expose those as well. So we can also expose our maps. The maps are real easy. I can uh, choose these and I can say um, convert to texture object or not to texture object, sorry, uh, convert to parameter. And in that parameter, we can set the name now to um, height map. And I'm going to uh, put this into uh, maps. And same thing with our uh, normal map. Uh, I'm going to say convert to parameter, normal map, and we'll put that into maps as well. Now, this one up here, because it's a texture object, I want to right click on it and I can't convert it to anything. It's not going to show up. I actually have to go do a search. So I'm going to do a search for texture object parameter and plug that in as the texture object parameter. Uh, I'll just give that a name. So diffuse map, and again, we'll put this into maps. And so this is now plugging into that channel. And then we have to set its default map to be the correct one. Uh, so again, I can go and find that, uh, that map that I'm using, which is Stone Tile 2 in this case. So I'll just drop in here and say Stone Tile 2. And there's our map. And then plug that in and get rid of our texture object. These will now all be um, available to us. So I'll hit Apply again, take a look at the instance, and you'll see now that we have our map section. So we can easily turn these on and drag and drop any maps or just use the defaults for our next texture. So if we have different normal maps and height maps, obviously for the next rock, all we have to do is overwrite these two, play with the values. And so uh, we would make a new material instance and do that. So we just go back to the original uh, uh, large, uh, large rock material and we'd make another instance for our small rock, for instance, plug in the correct maps, change the uh, diffuse map if we like, and be able to mix that together. Now, you can also start mixing in other maps to your diffuse. In my example, I had a crack map that uh, was, was mixed in, and that crack map uh, looked like this. And it was mixed in using another world line texture, and it was lerping the two diffuse maps together before it got plugged into everything else. So the, really, the sky's the limit. You can keep going and keep adjusting things. But this is now a completed texture that allows you to be able to uh, make all kinds of changes to it. It's relatively efficient and it's going to be quick and uh, fast for you to start building your scene with your rocks now. Hope you enjoyed it.